Hey everybody, welcome to winter in Utah. Snow-capped peaks, snow on the ground, headed towards Christmas. It's just amazing, wonderful time of year. Today I want to talk to you about shooting with your camera in manual mode. Now if you've not photographed in manual mode, if you just leave your camera on one of the auto modes and just go to town, you're missing out on a whole lot of opportunities to take better photographs. Most of the time I photograph, it's all in manual mode. I will occasionally put my camera on auto ISO so that I can set the aperture and the shutter speed however I want and the ISO will just adjust accordingly. But 99% of the time I photograph in full manual or what we call metered manual where you use the meter in your camera to determine what the exposure needs to be and then you set the settings how you want them to be set to get the desired effect. So let's show you more about that. So when you look through your lens and you're in manual metered mode, you should have a display that looks like this. You'll have your shutter speed, your f-stop, your ISO, and you'll have a meter that shows. As I change the f-stop, notice how the meter changes, or I could change the shutter speed and the meter changes. So how this works is your camera will have various metering modes you can set it on and then you can set it accordingly to how you want it to be metered with zero being the most likely option when it's right on the zero spot there. Now you're probably saying to yourself right about this time, what in the heck is he talking about? So let's start with ISO. ISO is an adjustment that changes in essence the sensitivity of the CCD, which is the digital plate in your camera that's kind of like digital film. It changes the sensitivity of that very similar to an electric guitar and turning the volume up on the guitar versus on the amp. So with the camera, when you turn up the, the ISO, it makes it more sensitive to the light around it. It also can cause more noise or distortion like on electric guitar. So you'll notice if you run your ISO on auto and you're shooting in low light conditions and you start looking at these on a computer, they'll start to get noisy. They have a lot of grain to them that's because the ISO is high. So when you're shooting like at night, for instance, night sky photography, you have to have your ISO up high to be able to record enough light to get the stars, to get the Milky Way, to get what you're trying to get. Well, in most landscape photography, you really want your ISO set at 100 or 64. In that realm, I usually keep it right there between 64 or 100. Sometimes I'll drop a little bit below 64, depending on what I'm trying to get. But it's very important to understand ISO and how it will affect your photographs so that when you're photographing and you want to get the sharpest, best color in your photographs, you want to have a low ISO. All right, now let's talk about f-stop or aperture on your lens. Here is my 14 millimeter Rokinon lens. This has a manual aperture ring on it because it's kind of old school, but I really like that. It works really good for this example. The aperture or the f-stop commonly referred to as the f-stop is the back opening on the lens. Right now I've got this set at 22, which is very small. You see there's just a very small amount of light coming through that. If I open it up, now it's quite a bit bigger. You see that, that's a 2.8, which is quite wide for a, a lens. There's faster, but that's pretty fast. So, so 22 is really small and 2.8 is really wide. What this is doing is allowing light in through the lens. You can, having it down lower, lets obviously less light in, opening it up allows more light in. This works in combination with the ISO and with the shutter speed. We'll get to the shutter speed in a second. So understanding ap aperture or f-stop is really important. It plays a big part in what's called depth of field, which we're gonna get to in a minute. All right, now let's talk about shutter speed. The shutter on the camera is a mechanism that opens and closes 
for seconds or fractions of seconds. The shutter on the camera is similar to your eyelids. If you close your eyes first, just close them and then pop them open really quick like a blink and close them again, you're picking up just a little bit of information. That is similar to what goes on with the shutter in your camera. The longer your eyes are open, the more information you can pick up. In a situation like this where you're photographing a landscape, the shutter is not as important unless you've got movement going on like the wind is blowing the trees and you don't want them to be blurry, um, stuff like that, then you're going to want to have a faster shutter speed. But generally, like in this situation, it doesn't really matter. I could have my shutter speed at whatever I need it to be at to make the exposure proper with what ISO and what aperture I've selected. So that's shutter speed in a nutshell. It might You might have your shutter go from a fraction of a second, like one two thousandth of a second. If you're photographing a race car driving by and you want it to be stopped or a horse running and you want it to be stopped, or you might set your shutter speed at like 15th or 30th of a second if you want to do a motion blur of something that's moving by like horses running by like in this photograph. In this photograph I had my shutter speed set at I think a 30th of a second and I panned as they ran. I just kept, I started following them as they were running and I pressed the button and just kept following just one fluid smooth motion as I took the photograph to get that shot and that's with the slow shutter speed. Another instance where you might want to use a slower shutter speed is when you're photographing a waterfall and you want to have the water have that just th that beautiful silky look to it. You use a slower shutter speed anywhere from a 15th of a second to even a second or two depending again on the conditions to get that effect. So to combine these settings in a real life situation let's look at this photograph behind me. So I've got bushes in the foreground and I've got a mountain out there in the distance at infinity. If I want everything to be sharp, that's called a deep depth of field. A depth of field is a term you're going to need to get used to if you want to shoot in manual settings on your camera. What it, it, what it boils down to is this. Hold your finger all the way out in front of you and focus on it. Your finger will be in, in focus, but everything behind it with your peripheral vision will be out of focus. If you move your finger closer to you and keep focusing on it, you'll notice the stuff behind it is even more out of focus than it was with your finger out at arm's length. That is in essence depth of field. When you focus on something with your camera, we'll call that the focus plane. Say you're going to focus on these bushes in the foreground because they're all covered with snow. To make sure that they're in focus and the background is in focus, you have to use a smaller aperture. Like I showed you, the aperture needs to be smaller. The smaller it is, the more in front of and behind of your focus plane, everything will be in focus. Wait, what? So when you see these shots where they've got a flower in the foreground and a mountain scene in the back, that's a depth of field concept where they're focusing somewhere in the middle and by controlling their depth of field with a smaller aperture, they're able to get everything in focus. In essence, they're actually one of the tricks is called focus stacking where you focus on the flower, you focus out in the foreground and then you focus in the distance and then you merge them all together in Lightroom. But that's a lesson for another day. But in basics, you can get a lot of stuff done in camera by using the proper f-stop to get your photograph to look right. So let's show you one. All right, so now my subject is going to be that bush right there that still has a little bit of fall color on it. Watch what's going to happen as I focus on it and change the depth of field. Here I am on live preview and this is very similar to what I see inside my viewfinder. Shutter speed, aperture, ISO. This is what you should be seeing, something similar to that when you look through your viewfinder. So I've got the aperture set at 5.3, which is wide open. I'm gonna tell it to focus right there on those leaves. Takes a picture. What the hell am I looking at? It's black. What the heck just happened? 
Why is my picture black? What the heck? Oh, check it out. I didn't change the shutter speed. I left the shutter speed at 500. It's so underexposed, the image is literally black. Now look, if I adjust this back up, because I'm in the shade now, so it's a huge exposure difference between the shadows and the, the light out there. I'm going to set have to set this all the way at 1 20th of a second versus 1 500th of a second. Now I'm going to take a picture. And look, wow, it's actually there. It's not black. And there's my histogram. Pretty good histogram. Nice and, you know, towards the center. Now look what happens when I zoom in here. Focus isn't dead on because I didn't, I just told the camera to focus in there. But you see the, the leaves are sharper than the background. Let me find a background spot. See how shallow, how just how blurry that background is versus that leaf. Let me see if I can get a better focus on those leaves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. See how they're blowing a little bit? They're moving just a tiny bit in the breeze. That could be part of the reason that they're that they're blurry. But I've zoomed in here in my live view. And I'm going to adjust the focus. See that? Until that one leaf is nice and sharp. Now I'm going to take the picture. Now when I zoom in on that to preview it. There's it about 200%. That's look how sharp that is. That's nice because I focused in live view and was able to zero in my focus better. But with my shallow depth of field, stuff behind what I've just focused on is totally out of focus. Even things that aren't, aren't that far away. And the background is really out of focus if you see that. So I'm going to change the f-stop and let's put it at 11. And then because now the aperture is smaller, I'm going to have to change the shutter speed to get the meter to go back into the zero range. Right there, I'm going to just park it at zero. That's one fifth of a second. Now I'm going to take the photograph. Virtually the same. I'm going to zoom in on this now, bring it up to all the way in. That leaf still nice and sharp but notice the stuff that one that branch in front of it is sharper the branch the leaves behind it are a little sharper the stuff that was out of focus is a little bit sharper it's still soft the background is still quite out of focus now i should mention i'm at about 100 millimeters zoomed in so let's do this let's set the f-stop at 20 no, on this lens at 36, which is a very small opening. And then let's adjust the shutter speed accordingly to two seconds. And watch what happens. Did you hear how long that shutter stayed open for? Two seconds. Now I'm going to zoom in on it. The birds are coming in to yell at me. <laughs> Here I am at about 100%, and there's that leaf, that same leaf. Actually doesn't quite look as sharp as it did. The focus may have changed a little bit. At that long of an exposure, that leaf isn't as sharp as it, as it was, and that's probably because the wind was blowing just enough to make that leaf move. But the others are a little sharper still, and the background is significantly sharper. Look at that which that, that was totally blurry before, is a lot sharper. That's depth of field. So controlling your depth of field to get what you want to be in focus or out of focus is extremely important. In a shot like this, I would probably go somewhere in between, like maybe F8 to where I'm getting enough of the bush in focus that it looks good, but enough of the background out of focus that it's not competing with the subject which is those nice fall leaves.
sometimes the meter will tell you to set the exposure at zero and that's not going to give you the best effect. For instance, in this one I just took, my histogram is quite over to the left, the, the blacks, the, the whites are in the center. I could move that more to the right by overexposing. So I'm going to bump this exposure up some and overexpose it just a little bit and see how this looks. So there the histogram has moved over. I've got a spike on the left and a spike on the right, but it's a much better exposure because the foreground is not as dark. So sometimes you have to adjust it on the fly to get what you want, and you do that by checking your histogram. If you don't know what a histogram is and how to use it on your camera, figure it out. Look at the manual, figure out how to view your histogram. It will go a long way in helping you get proper exposures on your camera when you're shooting in manual mode. The histogram is in essence a digital representation in the form of a graph of your exposure. The, generally, the highlights will be on the right and the shadows will be on the left. A perfect histogram is like a pyramid with the peak right in the middle. That's not always going to happen. It's, you can't get it sometimes. Like in this shot, I've got light on the mountains in the background and shadows in the foreground so it's got a what's called an exposure latitude is quite wide like with those leaves over there i think i shot that at one second with the aperture at uh, what was that 11 i can't remember and the sky though meters differently and you can actually zoom in on an area or if you have a spot meter on your camera use that and meter the highlights up in the sky and the meter the shadows and figure it all out. Generally the meter in the camera will do that for you and then when you look at the histogram it will help you determine what you need to do to get a better exposure. So I hope this helped you understand a little bit about how to photograph in manual mode on your camera. You're going to have to get out your manual to figure out manual mode, manual in manual mode. <laughs> You're going to have to Look at the manual, the user manual on the camera, play with the settings, figure it out. I told somebody recently when I was teaching him uh, in a mentorship, I said, you really should get so familiar with your camera that it's second nature to use the controls. And I said, do that by sitting in front of your TV while you're watching TV and just play with it. Just hold it, caress it, touch it, kiss it, hug it, call it George. I will name him George, and I will hug him and pet him and squeeze him. <laughs> just, just hold it and feel it. Get used to the feel of it in your hands. Get used to where the, the controls are. Take pictures of the TV screen if you have to. Just things in the room to figure out how to get used to using your camera. That's, it needs to be an extension of your body. When you're, when you're out photographing, even if it's on a tripod, you need to be able to just start doing things second nature, especially when you're photographing in manual mode. Now, okay, there are a couple other settings I need to talk about really quick. Most cameras have an A, that stands for aperture priority, where you can set the aperture, whatever you want it to be, and then the shutter will adjust accordingly, automatically. There's a uh, an S for shutter priority, well you, you can set the shutter at whatever you want it to be and then the aperture will adjust accordingly to get the exposure properly. There's program on most cameras which will do it all and then there's some other setting, other ones, it depends on the camera and, the, and that. But also there's automatic, which I mentioned at the beginning of this, they're setting your camera on automatic ISO. I will do that when I'm photographing wildlife. I'll just put it on automatic ISO so that I can set my shutter speed fast enough. I know I'm not going to get any blurred shots from the animals moving and I can set my aperture at an appropriate spot so I know that the depth of field will be right on, for instance, say a fox. I don't want the whole background to be in focus. I'll set it to where the aperture is just enough that I know the background is going to be out of focus but the fox will be in focus. I'll just leave my shutter speed at one thing, my aperture at one thing, and let the auto ISO compensate. Does that make any sense? I hope that makes sense. So with all that said, it's getting cold out here. Even with these on, my fingers are starting to get numb. 
<laughs> Got to put my little caps on there. It's uh, cold down in the bottom here of this uh, ravine. So I hope this made sense. I hope you enjoyed this little video on how to set your camera in manual mode. If you have any questions, comment in the comments section and I'll answer, or you can drop me an email. You can look at my website, twmitchell.com and contact me through there. Whatever you want to do, I'm more than happy to answer your questions. So thanks so much for watching and happy trails.